Hello, I'm Jacob Gudry, and in this video I'll be going over the hardware design of my High Power Brushless DC Motor Controller, or 3-Phase Inverter. This design was fully done in KiCad, and I will do a full walkthrough of all my schematic and layout, and then finally do a demo of the controller in action. So to start off, here are my design goals going into the schematic. I want to have full galvanic isolation between my low voltage and high voltage circuitry, and I want a real-time per-phase per current and voltage measurements and DC bus voltage measurements for my control algorithm. So here's an overview of the block diagram. So here I have the three phase half bridges all connected to a motor, giving Hall Effect sensor data back into a microcontroller. Each one of these is an isolated gate driver, receiving a PWM signal to determine when the high side and low side MOSFET will turn on. And then each of these has, each of these phase nodes has a shunt resistor for current measurements. These are all of my isolated DC to DC converters. So this powers my high side um, driver. This powers my high side B driver. This powers my high side C driver. And then all of my low side drivers are all referenced to high voltage ground. So they're all powered by the same um, DC to DC converter. Each of these are a separate converter because they're all referenced to each switching node to keep the driver's power consistent based on if the high side fed is on or the low side fed is on. And then finally, I have seven ADCs, analog digital converters. Each of these are my current sense, so they're taking in the voltage across the shunt resistor and giving, my, giving me a digital out. And then I have these um, voltage sense ADCs. Each of these is taking in a divided voltage of each phase and the divided voltage of my DC bus and giving me a digital out signal. Stepping away from the block diagram, here's the overview top sheet of my schematic. So here I have each phase and then I have a few high voltage connectors, mounting holes, um, the low side power, which is shared between all three phases, and then my DC sense. So going into phase A, first let's look at the high side power. And this is the same circuit for the low side power, but here is my converter. It's a TMR4. Um, it, has, it takes in 24 volts from a control circuitry and then a little EMI filtering circuitry I copied from the um, data sheet and then some output bypass capacitance and a few indicator LEDs. And then in my driver, I have the high side and low side driver for phase A. Here I have some bypass capacitors and some fault detection and power detection uh, signals and then a reset signal. And then it outputs, it takes in uh, plus and minus 15 volts based on the um, switching node voltage and outputs a clamp FET signal and then an out high and out low signal. Going over to the switches, we'll go into this sheet. I have three MOSFETs in parallel for my high side and low side drivers for current capacity. And then I have an RCD snubber across the drain source of each of my MOSFETs to absorb um, ringing when switching events happen. So whenever the switching event happens, let's say the FET turns off, the diode is a Schottky diode and instantly shunts all of the excess energy into this ca capacitor. And then whenever the diode turns, whenever the uh, MOSFET turns on, the capacitor discharges all the energy through the resistor. This resistor acts as current limiting so that I don't overly stress the um, MOSFET. I have the same for high and low side. And then I have a very, very, very low resistance shunt to uh, redu reduce conduction losses. And that will be measured through my ADC. Going up one sheet, I then have a um, overcurrent protection circuit um, going to my driver and then on each of my MOSFETs I have a turn on and turn off resistance. So typically MOSFET turn on is faster than turn off, which can be an issue whenever we're looking at mitigating shoot through. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to have a higher turn on resistance than turn off resistance to maybe make these times equal or even make turn off resistance or turn on take um, time take longer than turn off time to uh, mitigate shoot through. I will also have dead time insertion for my PWM signals via um, my microcontroller. And finally, I have this external clamp FET. So this is a signal that comes from my driver and it enables this external MOSFET to pull my gate voltage to negative 15 volts whenever the MOSFET should be off. And what this does is it provides a very, very low resistance path, lower than the turn off resistor to further solidify that my MOSFET will stay off when it's supposed to stay off, which is a safety consideration. And finally, I have some uh, DC bus capacitance 
and then I have my phase voltage sets. So each of these are fully galvanically isolated um, ADCs. This is my voltage sense. So it voltage divides down the input voltage that could be zero to 120 volts through a very big divider, takes in this difference and then outputs that via this volt data signal and takes in a 20 megahertz clock. And then I have, of course, all the bypass capacitors and an indicator LED. Oh, and it is powered via this LDO because my um, DC to DC converters are quite noisy on their outputs. So this uh, LDO provides a very low noise, five volt power supply for my um, ADC. And I have my current sense ADC, which is very similar to volt sense. I also have an LDO. The voltage is referenced to the switch node. So this is the effective ground voltage and it takes in the voltage across my shunt resistor and also takes in a 20, 20 megahertz clock and outputs the data signal. And moving on, here's my layout. So as you can see, the board is six layers. All layers are high copper weight for current capacity. And for signal routing purposes, I have effectively three circuits that are very similar. I have phase A, phase B, and phase C. So here are my high voltage connectors. They are huge through holes that I screw down O-rings to, to carry out um, high gauge wires. And I have, let's go do a deep dive into phase A. I'll have to turn off a few of the layers because my PC starts to lag. But here's phase A. So I have each of my high power MOSFETs, three per high side and three per low side each in parallel for current capacity. I have my switching node plane in the middle and then my shunt resistor down here to my output plane. Every single layer in this board is primarily done with planes for current capacity and heat dissipation purposes. Um, here I have my RSD snubbers very, very close to the drain source of my MOSFETs to minimize that ringing and not add too much trace parasitic inductance to decrease the effectiveness of the snubber. And I have my, I've worked heavily on the optimization of my driver signal traces. So I realized early on that these signals for my um, out high, out low, and clamp FET were gonna have to be routed via the first inner layer. And I knew that adding vias would add a large parasitic inductance. So to mitigate this, I put six vias in parallel to induce a one sixth of the parasitic inductances. And when I tested the board, this actually worked great. There was no noticeable parasitic conductance and the um, gate was very, very responsive to the signals that I was putting in. Um, and then I have routed these straight down as tightly as I can so that each three of these um, MOSFETs can get pretty much the same signal. And I've done that for the same on the low side. Finally, I have my DC bus capacitance. So I put a lot of low ESR, low ESL ceramic capacitance, um, very, very close to the drain source of my, or the, to the um, high voltage plus and minus of my half bridge. And then down here, I have a higher ESL, ESR, but larger capacitance um, um, electrolytic capacitor if I wanted to increase my DC bus capacitance up to about a millifarad. And up here, I have my um, isolated DC DC converter powering my high side driver. And here's my digital um, PWM signals in here. And here is the low side driver. And then finally, I have my um, uh, current sense ADC here and my connector out to go to my microcontroller. And I have my um, voltage sense ADC here. A lot of attention was paid on this board to creepage and clearances distances as I did want full galvanic isolation between my control circuitry and my switching circuitry. And also I didn't want a 120 volt energized node to be too close to say a ground node to cause arcing on my board. So as you can see, these planes are very, very far apart. This is a ground plane and this is another ground plane, but this is galvanically isolated between my digital circuitry and my uh, more analog circuitry. And then this phase node could be energized anywhere from zero to 120 volts. And this is a ground node. So there's special consideration to make that these distances were all okay and researched and large enough to where there's no risk of arcing due to improper cre creepage and clearance distances. Once I finished my layout in KiCad, I got the board ordered and it took a while to get here. And then I spent the next month or so assembling and testing the board. And now it's pretty much fully assembled. So first I have my 
isolated DC to DC converters, my three for high side uh, power reference to each switching node and my one um, low side DC DC. I have my six gate drivers, which are all six of these ICs and they're um, digital connector pins. Then I have my uh, low ESL ESR ceramic capacitance for my DC bus and I haven't soldered on the um, larger electrolytic capacitors. I haven't had to use for them yet. Down here are my high voltage connectors. As you can see through these screw terminals, I screw down O-rings connected to um, six gauge to lower gauge wire, depending on the current capacity. I have my isolated ADCs and all of their control and power circuitry going to these um, connectors to my microcontroller. I have my um, on and off resistors here and my clamp fat resistor and my external clamp fat to get this gate node really, really tied down to the negative voltage. And then I have my RCD snubbers on each VDS node to decrease ringing. And finally on the back, I have a huge row of basically just bypass capacitors for my drivers and my uh, isolated DC-DC converters. And then I have each half bridge of these um, power FETs. And I have my pretty much 100% coffer um, shunt resistors for my ADC measurements. And here's a video of my motor controller spinning a brushless DC motor. So here's the motor, obviously. I don't have a higher power motor yet. I'm still trying to get one, but I have a smaller 24 volt, 35 watt motor to spin. Um, each of these three wires are each phase connected to A, B, and C on my board. And then I have Hall effect um, sensor measurement data going back to my new Clay OG4 to um, read its position. And then this whole mess of wires is effectively PWM signals to each of my gate drivers. And then um, SPY connected to my A and B um, phase current measurements to run fuel oriented control. So now as you can see the motor is running, I can increase the voltage to my DC bus and then increase the speed to my motor. So this is running at six volts. Obviously it's already running pretty fast now. And then I can go ahead and increase it up. This is at 12 volts. And then we can run it all the way at the maximum voltage this motor can take, which is 24 volts. It's gonna run pretty fast. See the motor's running pretty fast, it's pretty cool. So my controller is generating three 120 degrees out of phase sine waves to enable this motor to spin like that. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned, I will soon be releasing a video on my field-oriented control algorithm and the software implement implementation. I'll also be deep diving into uh, my ADC sampling, my PWM control, and various more embedded features that I've implemented for this controller. I will also be eventually spinning a high-power brushless DC motor, and stay tuned for that as well. Thank you.